This is the third video lecture on theory-based assessment. In this video lecture we're going to learn about solution-focused therapy and its applications in assessment. The outcomes rating scale and session rating scale are two of the most useful assessment tools that emerged out of the solution-focused brief therapy movement. Scaling, of course, is a central solution-focused brief therapy intervention that is often used to quantify the severity of the client's complaint. It can be also used to wonder about a small step towards improvement, almost as an intervention tool. For example, you may say to the client, you rate your anxiety today as a 6 out of 10. What can you do right now to help you get to a 5 out of 10? This is significant because, again, you're helping the client think about small steps towards improvement. There are many types of scaling that exist, both structured or planned, for example, the outcomes rating scale, and unstructured or spontaneous. An example of this would be what I just mentioned, which would be your anxiety today is 6 out of 10. How can we get it to a 5? You could use that in an unscripted way, unplanned way, in a session with a client if they said they were feeling anxious. Two of the most common structured forms of scaling in solution-focused brief therapy are goal attainment scaling, which is non-standardized, and the outcomes rating scale and session rating scale, which is standardized. So what is goal attainment scaling? Well, goal attainment scaling is usually a, a four-point scale in which the client identifies a goal that they have in their own words, and then they also identify what their baseline is, what, how they are currently doing towards that goal, what it would look like for them to achieve that goal, that's the, the last there, the plus two, what small steps they could take towards a, the achievement, so what improvement would look like, and also you want to ask the client what it would look like if they took a step backwards and towards achieving that goal, that would be worsening. And again, the client gives you uh, responses for what this would look like in their lives, and they basically have defined there their own scale that of you know quantifying progress towards their goal. This is very solution focused because it's asking a client to identify what the change looks like and can be quite useful uh, in a variety of settings including things like career counseling. The outcomes and session rating scale are standardized norm referenced assessments, standardized in that the same question items are asked in the same administration every time to, the, the, to every client, and norm referenced in that the client's responses are compared with a norm group. The outcomes rating scale is completed in the waiting room, whereas the session rating scale is completed with the therapist at the end of the session. So you can almost have kind of a pre-post there. The ORS contains four items, individually, interpersonally, socially, and overall. Individually is asking about a person's personal well-being. Interpersonally is asking about a person's family and close relationships, how well the, those relationships are going. Socially is asking a client about broader relationships in their macro system, things like work, school, friendships. And then overall, a general sense of well-being is what is rated last. With the RS, basically you have the client put an X on each of those lines, and then you use a ruler, because each of those lines is exactly 10 centimeters, use a ruler to mark how many centimeters that is, so maybe 7.7 .7 for example. And then you do that for each of the four lines and then add them up for a composite score out of 40. The ORS can be used, of course, therapeutically. Just like with scaling, you could ask, what do you think it would take for that mark to move one centimeter to the right? What would need to happen? Low scores on subscales typically are areas that the client wants to change. So if, that, for example, their interpersonal subscale, their close relationships, is the lowest, that would be the area to focus on. High scores on subscales are thought of as competencies, resources, strengths, social supports. So again, you can recruit and use these as part of treatment. This seems to be going well in your life right now. I'm wondering how this could help you with your other problem, your interpersonal problem, for example. There are cutoffs for the RS that are useful 
because they help us understand uh, what the client scores mean. So you see here a graph that is out of 40 on the very left hand side. We follow the y-axis, it's a scale of 0 to 40. And remember I told you before that the ORS has four question items, each out of 10, 10 centimeters, that are added up and, and totaled out of 40. The ORS cutoff is uh, about you know, 25 or so, we'll talk about this in a minute for adults, and we'll talk about what that means. And the SRS cut is about 36 for adults. So let's talk about the ORS. Remember the score is out of 40. Adults, if they have a score that is at or below 25, or for adolescents it is at or below 28, or children at or below 32, and before I proceed I have to explain, adults typically are more mm, either more pessimistic or perhaps more honest raters of how they're doing, whereas adolescents and children tend to uh, kind of elevate how they're actually doing. They may see, say they're doing fine, but in fact they're not. Uh, and if a child, anyway, and if, if an ad, a, adult, adolescent, or child scores below that cutoff, it's an indication that they are in the client range or the clinical range, meaning they're in need of counseling, basically. So if an adult, for example, scores 26, one above the cutoff, it means they're scoring in the non-client range, in the range of people who are not going to therapy. That's based on research. So in other words, if a client scores in the non-clinical range, you may start wondering about termination and at what point do you want to begin that process. The average score for adult intake clients is about 19. So again, below the cutoff, meaning in the clinical range, as you might expect for adult intake clients. Be, care be careful with clients who score more than 25. They are more likely to deteriorate than make progress as therapy goes on because let's say you're an adult who has a score above 25. You may think that you're doing pretty well and then when you get into a lot of the difficult issues and that you're working on in counseling, maybe your past and maybe behaviors you're trying to change, you may be struggling and your ORS score may dip slightly. So just be aware of that, that that can happen. Early change by a client predicts engagement in therapy and positive outcome at termination. Clients who report no progress early or show no signs of improvement over the entire course of... Oh, sorry, let me read that again. Clients who report no progress early on, so in the early stages of therapy, will show no improvement over the entire course of therapy and may end up dropping out. This may seem kind of glib to you, but it's based on research evidence, which is the first seven sessions really do predict how the rest of therapy is going to go. 75% of positive outcomes have a more than five point increase on the ORS within three to four sessions. That's pretty amazing, 75%. 98% of positive outcomes have a more than five point increase on the ORS within six to seven sessions meaning it's very, very unlikely for someone not to have a more than five point increase after six to seven sessions. So if you reach the seventh session and you haven't had a more than five point increase, it may be time to think about termination. This is what the ORS scores mean. Deterioration is a drop of five points. That's worrium, worrisome. Sorry. No change is when the client is at risk if after three to four sessions. So if they have no change after one session or two sessions, eh, no big deal, they may just be warming up to change. But if they have no change after three to four sessions, they're at risk of premature termination, dropout, negative outcome. Reliable change is an increase of five points over their initial uh, score or rating. And clinically significant change is not only reliable change, which is an increase of five points, but also crossing the cutoff into the non-clinical category. So for example, this would be someone who comes to see you who has an intake score of let's say 19, who uh, by let's say the seventh session has a score of 26, which is seven points more. That's an increase of more than five points and also crosses the cutoff into the non-clinical category. That is known as clinically significant change. If deterioration or no change occurs, you need to have 
one of two things depending on the timeline. Within the first three to four sessions you need to have what's called a checkpoint conversation about the client's lack of progress and by the sixth or the seventh session you should have a last chance discussion and consider referring out at this point. Now this may seem shocking to you as a therapist. What do you mean referring out a client after seven sessions? Well, this is what uh, the solution-focused theorists such as Barry Duncan believe. He says that failure to refer may indicate a lack of faith that the client will make more meaningful changes with another therapist. So we sadly tend to blame the client for their lack of change, meaning it may just be that you're just not a good match for the client and that actually they would be better served by another therapist. That's a fairly radical and revolutionary way of thinking about therapy, that we are not always the cure, the magic bullet for the client, the, that one person that's going to come along and save them. Often this has nothing to do with us, of course. Certain clients just fit better with other people, and it's helpful for us to realize that. During checkpoint conversations and last chance discussions, we want to recruit the client's theory of change. So in other words, we want to ask questions like, what do you usually do to initiate changes? What do others do to help? How does change usually happen for you? What ideas do you have about ways for progress to occur? Now again, you're asking the client about what they think would help. Many times, people have a good hunch about not only what is causing the problem, but also a way to resolve it. Do you have a theory of how change can happen here? Don't be afraid to ask the client to clarify deterioration. It may be, and I've seen this clinically, that there is a single unrelated recent life factor or incident that's happened, what we call a pothole. And if this is the case, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. In other words, don't make the pothole into a bigger deal than it really is. If they, there's been some deterioration between uh, ratings, it may just mean the client has had a particularly difficult week, not that the client is actually deteriorating. However, you should ask the client about this to clarify. If the client achieves reliable or clinically significant change, we want to reinforce this because we want to cast the client as the main character of their change narratives. So we may say things like, you really are taking advantage of what is available to you. A lot of people are offered the same resources and didn't take advantage of them. How did you decide to take the step forward? What did you learn that finally enabled you to put your plan into action? It's helpful if the client is making progress to also inquire about how they have developed mastery and to tease out before and after distinctions. This is useful because the client, hopefully, will be able to distinguish how they have changed and how they're different from how they were before. A question like, what did you learn from that experience, can be useful for that reason. The plateau effect is less predictable than initial change, which reliably predicts poor outcome in three to four sessions, whereas the plateau effect can take anywhere from eight to twenty sessions. Now, what is the plateau effect? Well, if you imagine a line graph, basically the client will either, will hopefully increase their functioning, their score on the outcomes rating scale over time and at some point they're going to hit their sweet spot where they're not going to change up or down. They're, they're just, they've hit the best they're going to be and they are at what's called a plateau, meaning the more sessions that you have there uh, does not result necessarily in any change in their scores. When you reach the plateau effect that's really when you should be looking at termination if for clients who have improved in therapy. If the client is making gains, try to get the client to continue treatment until the plateau effect occurs. Premature termination is not conducive to long-term positive outcomes. The most effective therapists, they found this through research, have one to two more sessions with clients than unsuccessful therapists. So you don't want to just end early, you want to make it a planned um, uh, activity so that you have at least one to two more sessions to review progress. A script for this could be, it may be a good idea to come back for one to two more sessions to consolidate your gains and plan for the future. What do you think? During the termination phase of treatment, remind the client that recovery is a lifelong process that continues outside of therapy. In other words, 
they've made some significant changes and gains, and their therapy is just part of their process that they need to continue working on. Here are some special issues in the use of the ORS that you should be aware of. In the case of triangulation, for example, a court-referred client, you can get the other perspective of the story by asking the client to fill out another ORS from the perspective of a third party, teacher, parent, probation officer, for example. That can be quite telling. Also, ensure that the first ORS is an accurate rating of the client's functioning. Transparency here is important. You should ask clients for help if their scores don't make sense to you. For example, if they say they're doing just fine but they have a very, very low rating, you should ask to, for, them, for them to clarify that. Or if they, again, say that they're not doing so well but they have a very high rating, ask them to clarify that. When graphing the ORS, um, which it, when graphing, I'm sorry, the ORS, it can be helpful, especially when you're working with couples or families, to look at disparities. So in other words, if you have a couple that you're working with and they're rating how they're doing personally, you could uh, compare how each member of the couple is doing week to week to week and compare uh, progress. It can also be helpful to show progress and provide support for the need to terminate. For example, if the ORS reaches a plateau, you can show this through the graphing. Termination, therefore, doesn't come as a surprise, and I'll share my experience with this. I was once working with a 10-year-old girl whose mother had brought her into therapy, having had ther therapy in the past, and I was using the outcomes rating scale with her, the child version of it. And over time, over the first, I believe it was seven or eight sessions, the child really was not making any progress. I, she was being brought in for her mother for symptoms of OCD, and when I would suggest homework, the girl did not want to complete it and the mother did not follow through with it. And this was reflected in the ORS scores, which were fairly consistent across those eight sessions. There was not much change happening. And I knew this, so by the eighth session, I showed them the graph of no change and asked about whether or not they wanted to continue based on that graph, because clearly the person wasn't changing, the young person, so was it really worth their investment? And we all agreed that it wasn't at this time because the girl really wasn't ready for change. She was, you know, as is often true with OCD, people with OCD do not like to give up their behaviors or, tr or try to change them. And it does require significant input from other support people around them, which the mother was not able to provide. If you wanted... The ORS could also be useful for you in terms of your own career development because you could track data on your own longitudinal outcomes using, for example, an Excel spreadsheet. You could look at intake ORS scores for every client you have had in the past uh, as a pre-measurement and the final ORS scores that you had. Then you could look at the difference between them, the number of sessions that were needed, the number of sessions to achieve a successful outcome, which was the five-point increase and score above the clinical cutoff, what we call clinically significant change on the ORS. And then you could also look at dropout rates, one for dropout, two for completed therapy as an example coding. If you put together a spreadsheet like that over, let's say, a 10-year period, wouldn't that be interesting to look at how you were doing year to year to year in regards to client outcomes? Session rating scale is what we're going to explore next. You've learned about the outcomes rating scale, which is helpful for evaluating the client's functioning and how they're doing week to week to week, and whether they are above or below the cutoff for, cl for the client range or the clinical range. While the outcomes rating scale measures functioning, the session rating scale measures the relationship. When you're using the session rating scale, your introductory scripting should be interpersonal, meaning you should talk about the here and now of the relationship, because really the session rating scale is about that. How are we doing? The cutoff for the SRS is 36 out of 40, and any item below 9 is a talking point. Remember, you have four items. So if there's an item below 9 that you want to ask them about that, how can I improve? How can I adjust what I'm doing? Here's a script for introducing the SRS. It's kind of like taking the temperature of our relationship today. Are we too hot or too cold? Do I need to adjust the thermostat? 
Here are the four items on the session rating scale. We have relationship, goals and topics, approach or method, and overall. For relationship, it's hard to read, but on the left-hand side, it says, I did not feel heard, understood, and respected. And on the far right, we have, I felt heard, understood, and respected. For goals and topics, we have, on the left-hand side, we did not work on or talk about what I wanted to work on or talk about. And on the right side, we did work on and talk about what I wanted to work on and talk about. Approach or method, we have the therapist's approach is not a good fit for me on the left. And on the right, the therapist's approach is a good fit for me. And overall, on the left, there was something missing in the session today. And on the right, overall, session today's session was right for me. Now, again, these are each on a 10 centimeter scale. The client marks an X. You use a ruler um, to evaluate you know, what the actual score was. Let's say it's 7.7 .7 centimeters. That means a 7.7 .7 rating out of 10. You add up those four scales and it gives you a composite score out of 40. Depending on the scores, there are two ways of proceeding. If you have an SRS that is above 36, you thank and invite more information from the client. If you have an SRS of below 36, you thank and explore. So let's look at what it would be like to thank and invite. If there's anything better that I could do, let me know. So it's just a follow-up. It looks like everything's going well. Let me know if you can think of anything I can do to make it uh, our, our relationship uh, better, uh, make our therapy improved. Next, thank and explore. This is where you start asking questions about change. What could I be doing differently? Is there something I could have done more or less of? Is there there's some question I could have, could have asked or should have asked but didn't? So in other words, you're wondering about what was missing that you could adapt and adjust to in the next session. Once you've gathered this information on the ORS and SRS, you can graph the results over time uh, for total scores. So you see here the total score for the ORS and SRS, and you can see from the graph here that the ORS has a significant increase from about 25 at the beginning to close to 35 at the end, and the SRS, which is in gray at the top, looks about stable throughout the relationship. That was an actual client that I had. That was their rating of me and our relationship as well as their own functioning across eight sessions. This is another actual example of a client that I had using the ORS. Figure one is ORS scores and figure two is SRS scores. You can get real specific if you want with ORS and SRS. I think that overall scores are probably fine, but if you wanted to track the each domain of the ORS and SRS, you could do that. So for example, uh, instead of out of 40, now we have a score out of 10 for each of the domains on the SRS and each of the domains on the ORS. So for the ORS we have individually, interpersonally, socially, and overall. And you can tell that overall the client has improved and that it also shows you how improvement has looked across those domains. For example, socially, if you look at that, that's the solid gray line that has always been above their interpersonal score, meaning that the client's work is a source or, or uh, other work or other relationships in their macro system seem to be pretty strong, their family life, for example, but their close romantic relationship uh, has been more difficult and that's been a source of concern for them. If you look at the SRS, you notice that those scores are actually very, very close together with one notable exception, which is by the eighth session, there's been a bit, a bit of a dip in, t in both the relationship and also in goals and topics. And this can happen uh, if you reach things like termination or if there's a pothole. If you're writing up a sample report for the ORS or SRS, this is what it might look like. Figure one depicts ORS item scores for the client across eight sessions. The client's overall rating improved significantly across the eight sessions, reaching a plateau between sessions six and eight. The client reported during session eight that a slight decline in her functioning occurred due to arguments with co-workers in the past week. This affected her individually and socially scores. Despite this setback, 
figure 3 demonstrates that her total improvement in functioning at the 8th session was sustained at a level far greater than the 1st session. Figure 2 shows SRS item scores across 8 sessions, which were consistently high, evidenced by total scores in figure 3. Of note, the client's relationship score and goals and topics declined between sessions 6 and 8. In the ninth session, I could have explored the reason for this decline. So, in other words, you're giving kind of the treatment flow and summary using the ORS and SRS to explain how they were doing in their progress. Okay, that concludes our video lecture on solution-focused forms of assessment, particularly the outcomes rating scale and session rating scale. And again, we'll be exploring the use of these in class.